We love you. We accept you just the way you are. So please come home. We're waiting for you. When I was a young child in summer camp, there was a song and one of the lines of the song is so meaningful that I remembered my whole life. So much so that it became my whole career, my whole life was around this one line. And the line is as follows. No matter where you may roam, you can always come back home. That one line is what defined what I wanted to do with my life. My life's journey was about bringing people back home. This journey over 40 years since I've came to the West Coast from Brooklyn, New York, was with that goal and mission in mind to show the way back home. And this is so important for us to understand and appreciate and realize that when you are born to a Jewish mother, you are born into a family that dates back 3,300 years. That you're not just another person existing, but the day that you were born, God said the world can no longer exist without you. I need to realize and understand that you have a soul in you, that God gave you a soul at birth. It's a godly soul, a spiritual soul, so that you can be an ambassador in doing good in this world. We're living in a generation now with many, many Jewish children grow up in an assimilated home, in a home that's void of any religion, any practices, or any exposure to Judaism and to Torah. So you may have grown up in a void of anything other than knowing, yeah, my parents are Jewish, my grandparents are Jewish, but nothing else. You may not even have had a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. And you may just think to yourself, I'm going to come and leave this world the same way, nothing in between, because I don't know. I have not been exposed. I have not been educated. I have not had the experience of what it means to be a Jew. And this is why I'm telling you this to you today. Please come home. It's never too late. You need to realize and understand that everything that happens in this world happens for a purpose and a reason. And the reason why you are hearing this YouTube segment is because God orchestrated it so you should hear my words. You should feel what I'm trying to share with you, that you are no less Jewish than Moses, King David, King Solomon, and all the great sages. You are just as Jewish as they are. Just because you don't you haven't studied, you haven't practiced, you haven't prayed, you haven't been connected, it's irrelevant for you to know that you are a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. You are a full, bona fide, 100% Jewish person, that you belong to such a family, such a dynasty that has been through so much for 3,300 years so that you should be here today. And it is for you to take the initiative to really allow yourself the opportunity to really get to know your soul, to get to know who you really are, and to get to know your heritage. And it's never too late. Many, many great leaders and sages started late in life. One of the most famous sages was known as Rabbi Akiva. He was 40 years old when he began his journey to learn Judaism. He grew up knowing that he was a Jew, but he was clueless. He did not know how to read Hebrew, did not know how to study any Torah. At age 40, he was strolling on one of his walks and he saw water dripping on a rock. And he thought to himself, my heart may be as strong as a rock because it has no Torah in it. It has no religion there, but yet water drops was able to make a dent in this hard rock. And he thought to himself that water and Torah 
are synonymous. Just like water, wherever it is, it, gravity pulls it down. It represents the Torah came down from heaven. Just like we cannot exist without water, a Jewish person cannot exist without Torah. And Rabbi Akiva at age 40 said, I'm going to start learning. I'm going to start educating myself. And he began studying and learning. He excelled so much that he became one of the greatest sages of all time. He's the author of the Talmud that we study. It is never too late. And don't underestimate what it means to be part of the Jewish nation. There's no parallel to anything else in the world. There are many religions, there are many nations, but there's something very unique about the Jewish nation. And I want to share with you a story that happened, began in 1911 in the former Soviet Union. There was a worker, his name was Mendel Bayless. He would come to work every day and do his work and go home and mind his own business. But a couple miles down from the factory that he worked at, a young Russian child was murdered brutally. And a couple weeks after the murder, they pinned it on Menachem Bayless. They, as known as the blood libel, and they said that Menachem Bayless was the murderer, and he used the blood in the Passover matzah. Menachem Mendel Bayless had a very strong alibi. There was no question to anyone that he was innocent. But anti-Semitism at the time was so high that this was a great opportunity to really, from the anti-Semites and politically, to pin this on an innocent Menachem Mendel Bayless. For two years he languished in the Soviet prison until he came to trial. In October was this grand trial. And at the opening remarks, the prosecutors began reading a verse from the Talmud that says, only Jewish people are called Adam. Adam means a man. So the prosecutor said, look what the Talmud says. Only Jews are, are human. And they look at everyone else as inhuman. And that's why they were able to murder a Christian Russian child and use its blood for matzah. That was their opening statement. Now, this was a very, very public trial because the world was taken by shock how they pinned an innocent Jew for this murder. Upon the stage, a great Rabbi Shapiro took the stand and he began explaining. The Talmud is telling us, yes, that a Jewish person is called Adam. And he went on to explain, in Hebrew, when you say the word ish, which means man, there is anashim, this plural for it, many men. Or you say isha, there are nashim, many women. But for the word Adam, man, there is no plural, there's only one. And he went on so eloquently to explain. When Mendel Bayless was charged with this murder, every single Jew in the whole world was touched by it, was offended by it. Mendel Bayless is not the one that's on trial. The Jewish nation is on trial. And he went on to say, if an Italian boy gets murdered in Italy and a murderer is put on trial, whether innocent or not, does someone in Israel shed a tear? Does someone in America or in Sydney, Australia shed a tear? When someone murders someone else in New York, is someone in Italy or Russia shedding a tear? But when Mendel Bayless was falsely accused of murder, much tears were shed internationally. Jews all over the world took out the book of Psalms, were praying to God to save this innocent Mendel Bayless. And this Rabbi Shapiro went on to explain. That is what the Talmud is saying. Yes, the Jewish people is Adam. It's the only nation in the world that is one large family. That when one is hurt, it hurts all of us. We are 
responsible for each other, we care for each other, we began as a nation, and we live as a unique nation. You don't find this by any other religion. You don't find it anywhere else that such a closeness and such a kinship and such responsibility for each other is not found anywhere else. And that's what makes a Jew a Jew. And that is what I'm telling you today. You are not alone out there. You are part of a family. We value you. We love you. We accept you just the way you are. So please come home. We're waiting for you. God is waiting for you. Your ancestors are waiting for you. You are a link from one generation to the next generation. So this is the time. This is your day to wake up and say, I need to reconnect to my roots. And it's not a very difficult task. Find yourself a Jewish community. Find a synagogue. Connect with the rabbi. Connect with members. And we're all going to be readily open with open arms to embrace you, to teach you, to guide you. In my 40 years as being a rabbi in this Southern California little town, I spent most of my days working with Jewish people who were far assimilated, who didn't know how to read Hebrew. But I embraced them. I took them into my life wholeheartedly. And I've changed the course of hundreds and thousands of people who are now living a Jewish life because I gave them that spark, because I welcomed them. You, too, have a beautiful, beautiful soul in you, a little spark. We're lighted up that you, too, can get reconnected to your heritage, that you could change the trajectory of all future generations who will not only know about Judaism, but would appreciate the heritage that you would be the one who was the ring in the long chain that connected the future with the past and you are in the middle. God will be so proud of you. When you'll discover your Judaism, you'll reveal your amazing connection to God Almighty in heaven who's waiting for you to come home. So no matter where you may roam, you can always come back home. Because that is where home is. You are not alone. You are part of a beautiful extended family that spans all corners of the world. There is a line in the Talmud that says that God did a kindness when he spread the Jewish people throughout the whole world. And one would question that. Why is that a kindness? Why didn't God keep everyone in Israel? And we would have all been in one country in our homeland. But yet he spread us throughout the whole world. And the Talmud explains, because God put us on this world to be his ambassadors for the whole world, to be a light unto the nations, so that wherever we are, we still have that responsibility. If we're living in a city in North South Dakota, or if we're living in Anchorage, Alaska, or living in Sydney, Australia, or in New Zealand, wherever we are in the world, you are still connected to God. You are still considered as an only child to God. That anyone who offends you is as if touching God's pupils, our sages tell us. That's how God considers you. Do not underestimate who you are, what blood runs through your sinews. It is Jewish blood of 3,300 years that awaits you to come back home and to get reconnected. Let today be the day that you say, enough is enough. I'm ready. I want to reconnect with my heritage. I want to reconnect with my soul. I want to follow in the footsteps of my great-grandparents. I want to be the one who's going to be this link from the past, the present, and the future. You take one little step, God is going to send you off on a trajectory that you wouldn't believe. Our sages use the parable. You open up even as small as a pinhole. God will open up for you the opening of a huge ballroom, which means you're not alone. You're never alone. God is with you to guide you, to assist you, and to help you on this new journey. Abraham, the very first Jew, also grew up in a home void of any spirituality. 
he took the initiative and look at the nation that is here 3,300 years that was started by Abraham by taking the very first step. So you too can take the very first step today. Look up the closest synagogue. Get reconnected. God has given us technology, the internet, with a wealth of information that you can study and learn so much that will really not only whet your appetite, but really help you answer all the questions that you have. God has given us technology that the world has never seen before. Even just in the last couple months, God gave us this chat GPT, this incredible AI resource that can really answer questions for you and even help write essays for you and give you some answers that you have been waiting for. So dive in, grab the opportunity and make it happen. God will be by your side and help you along this journey. Please subscribe to this channel so that you can learn more and be inspired more. God bless you. God loves you.